Hey there, everyone. How are you doing today? I have a special, really almost one-off walk through you to, to do today. What uh, what we're going to do here is welcome Adam to the show. How you doing, buddy? I'm good. Thanks for having me on, Mike. I appreciate it. Thank you for all you do. And folks, if you don't know, when, when I post a walkthrough video, they're usually about two or three minutes long, uh, you hear a voice and most of you have commented, hey, that's not you. I'm like, Nope, that's not me. I'm in the Silicon Valley. Haven't been to Fresno in over a year. I can't believe it. Uh, that is my good friend, Adam, who is doing the walk walkthrough for me. So it's it's this good good looking young man right here. Yeah, they could tell it wasn't you weren't that young. Huh? That quick. <laughs> exactly. Man, that ain't your voice, Zuber. What the hell are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> hey, so uh, what you're doing is you are inside our latest flip. Uh, it's actually in escrow for I think like 8% over asking, which is pretty special, yeah. right? So I've already done a video on the um, kind of before and after and ran through the numbers. But what I wanted to do here, just because we had time, right? Because it's in escrow. I want to walk through people, kind of the process we went through to get the deal, how you comped it, gave it kind of rules of thumb, then how you walked through it, then how we walked through it together. Because this really is an evolution and we could talk about design aspects, what we chose to save, what we chose to change, what we may have done different if I wanted it to be a rental versus owner occupant. There's just lots of things to talk about. You, you cool with that? Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Happy to go over all the details. Yeah. So why don't you just real quick, I've already kind of shared my story of how this deal came through. It was, it was something we actually had an agreed upon price for like nine months or something uh, before we actually closed. So why don't you just talk about from your perspective, how you got the lead, the conversations we went through, the struggles the seller had, then we took a chance and we finally got the problem taken care of. So you want to walk through that? Yeah. So, you know, this actually came as a pocket listing from an agent um, that I've been working with for whew, probably around almost two years now. Um, and we had made, you know, countless offers. And this was one of the, you know, she had brought a few pocket listings and this was one where you know, our services like lined up perfectly. Um, she brought it to me and the owners were going through an eviction and we're having some trouble with it, um, with the tenants inside. And so we ended up um, talking with the sellers and negotiated a price real quick. Mm -hmm. um, I believe our original price was actually a little bit higher. It I was. think we were at like 150 or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, and so that was kind of what we originally negotiated back in February of 2020. Yeah. Exactly. So note that date, folks, February 2020, we agreed to 150. And we're frankly ready to rock and roll. Yeah. And so the, um, the eviction process was still going on. And so we, uh, we were kind of helping out with that a little bit, but it kind of seemed to be going nowhere for the most part. Yeah, let, let um, me just let me just stop you there. Because one of the things that we, when we agreed to 150, and why it's stuck there is they and again, this was the seller, they I didn't yeah, they basically said, hey, we're going to take care of this problem. We're, we're going to deliver it to you vacant. And I'm like, okay, cool. Right. They didn't ask because I, at the time, I, I go through evictions all the time. I may have assumed responsibility, but they're like, nope, we got it. We've already started. It's halfway through. We got a court date. Let us finish and we'll deliver vacant. And of course, we're like, cool, awesome. And then, of yeah. course, the world changed. <laughs> yeah. And so, first of all, I mean, that's very, I won't say it's very rare, but it's, it's more so in our situation, we are doing the eviction, yeah. dealing with the tenants. Um, so the fact that they were already going through that, you know, they also had some, they were kind of mad at one of their money or the tenants to kind of get what was theirs. And yeah, so they were, they were yeah, exactly. kind of going after that. And so, um, you know, I know, you know, we were talking about it and, you know, we were maybe four or five, six months into the eviction and nothing was happening. Yeah. And this was during COVID when evictions were technically on pause. Yeah. And so we were kind of stuck and maybe a month or two kind of after nothing was really going anywhere. I realized that I found out that the attorney had actually passed away. And so yeah, that we was got new, stuck with that. That was a new one to me. I've never had that happen, right? So again, never had that. From my perspective, again, right? This is two and a half hours away. I hadn't been to Fresno in six months at this time. We had it agreed upon price. They offered because they were mad at the tenors, tenants, which they now called squatters. They had an eviction. Mm -hmm. The first one got kicked out for some reason. So they refiled, right? During COVID. 
and then we're like, what's going on? And then, yeah, you find out the attorney that they were using passed away. I was like, oh my God, this, yeah. this is like crazy, crazy stuff happening. Yeah. And so what happened was they, they actually, when they were doing the eviction, the tenant actually got out fairly quickly. They didn't want anything on the record. The issue was the subletter that stayed yeah. and brought it an extra four or five people. Um, and yeah. so then we reopened that eviction and I would say maybe two months and we got it all completed. Yeah. And what, what we basically said at the end of this, because at this point, the seller went from being mad at the tenant to being almost to the point, like I give up, I'm just going to let the city take the house. They were, they were, they were done. Right. So what we yeah. did with your coaching, and it was only because you were so good at what you do. People love you. You were able to go to them and say, Hey, let us assume responsibility for eviction. We'll pay for it. It's on our dime. We'll use our lawyers. You're not going to pay another penny. And then assuming they get out, assuming we win, which we're very confident we will, we'll close within a week of them being out, right? They're out Monday, we'll close Friday. Because mm -hmm. all we want is clean title because we don't know what else is going on. And yeah. um, you, you successfully walked them back because I was convinced after a year of being kicked in the nuts that they were like, screw it, I'm done with this place. Let them have it. Uh, I thought that's where we were going to end up and we'd lose the deal. Uh, but you saved it. So nice work. Thank you. Yeah. And, and you know, what, what was interesting too, is as house prices were going up, yeah, I was were. kind of thinking, well, they were kind of, I was thinking, well, they might come back and say, well, we want 160, 170. And we ended up getting it down to 140 yeah. after taking over the eviction. Um, yeah. It was so more like was, one, it's more like 143, just so we're all clear. Cause I did spend about three grand on evictions, but yes. Yeah. 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 But still it's not but 150. I, yeah, I, I agree. And it, I think it was a perfect scenario while we were holding it that long because we hadn't bought it and dealt with that eviction for a year. We yeah. were in escrow. Yeah, we dealing were. With that we eviction. had escrow open the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that was really beneficial to kind of the holding costs and, and yeah. money costs for, for this deal specifically. Um, and as you know, we'll talk about later, it ended up being to our benefit as yeah. the market shot up. Yeah, because all I did, I think I had $1,000 in escrow. So it was, you know, $1,000 of dead money, no big deal. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you look at it from a year perspective, that house probably went up easily 20% easily the ARV yeah. 20% might be 25%. But that, um, you know, it, it, it pays to be it, this business again is about solving problems. Mm -hmm. It's listening, solving problems and being kind. I, I wish more people would, would kind of marry that together like you do, Adam. So thank you. Why don't you talk about comping it? Right. Cause you, you, you first get contact like January of last year, well, you and I are talking in February, which means your first contact was probably January. what did you comp this thing at when you made that first contact? Cause I'm sure you did some homework. Yeah. So we were originally looking around like two thirty, yeah. maybe two forty. Um, yeah, right two forty would have been a six. stretch. Yeah. We're like, mm, maybe it's a busy street. Yeah. We're thinking more like yeah. 40, right? Uh, I agree. So it was on the street of Millbrook that can, garage had been converted to. And so there was a lot of similar comps, you know, and we're not really in that bad of an area at all. No, no, it's the area is nice. Fine. So yeah, that's area. awesome. Yeah. yeah. And so that made it easier to find similar comps, you know, around the same size. Um, I think the houses kind of around us are literally the same floor plan too, which was yeah, fairly they were, helpful. There were cookie cutters for sure. You know, they were like lefts and rights of each other. It was, yeah, very yeah. similar floor plans. So, um, so, okay. So we think 2.30, again, back in February, we have it locked up at 1.50. The next thing we would need to do is we need to ballpark um, repair costs. And this was a little challenging, right? Because we couldn't get yeah. in, right? We didn't really get in to see. I think you got in one time way back in the beginning. Originally. Real quick. Yeah, to take a quick picture. Mm -hmm. But you were never, never could get back in because of squatters and, and all the drama, right? Correct. Yeah. I'd probably knocked on the door half a dozen times at least and nothing. So nothing. people would shut the blinds and just turn off the lights and that was it. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, it was tricky, but we just had those original pictures essentially to go off of. Yeah. So what we did when we were planning this, cause we started, we, we started thinking this was a deal as I recall in March and we're like, we've got pictures, basically the house structure and the mechanicals were good. It was just mm -hmm. dirty. Filthy, yeah. Right. I remember in the beginning, and we'll do this when we walk through, when we flip the camera around, I remember budgeting for gutting the bathrooms, gutting the kitchen. And then like everything else is just new floor, new paint, new windows, right? How mm -hmm. many windows does it have? And then, you know, oh, by the way, we'll need six or seven dumpsters for all the stuff. 
Uh, and thank yeah. you. Uh, we didn't actually gut the kitchen, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, yeah. I think the numbers, I think I remember ballparking worst case scenario, 50 grand. Does that sound about right for the repairs? Does sound about right. Yeah. Right. And then, Just you know, about. again, we were thinking 150, 50 grand, maybe 230 easy. It was, I remember going kind of a skinny deal, but this was last February, right? The market was hot. There was no inventory. I'm like, Mm -hmm. You know, worst case, worst case at, at those numbers, I knew I could sell it to an investor. It wasn't, yeah. the market didn't take off. So I was like, well, investors are now priced out. At 230, it would have made a great rental. So I knew I could, I yeah. knew that would make sense. Um, okay, so that's caught us all up on the story. So why don't we, why don't we now start talking about, okay, we get this place. Let's walk through the different rooms. And I guess let's start in the front yard, right? Once you go to the okay. front yard, kind of, just talk about what we had to do because it was trashed everywhere. The outside needed to be cleaned up and then we'll come yeah, out of course. and do all of that. Awesome. So let me flip this camera around for everybody. Thank you. There you go. Look at that. So here's our front yard. Right off the bat, we can see this fence right here, mm -hmm. all replaced, yeah. bordering up with the neighbors, which is nice. And here is out a little bit so you can see it a little bit more yeah there we go so yeah can i kind of walk through and show people what we did please, here please awesome so i'll kind of start off with this the uh windows as you guys can all see all were changed into dual pane windows new framing around them as well which is real nice they those really pop out especially with the contrast and the color mm -hmm. um and you'll notice our walls right here this was all wood mm -hmm half or majority of the other house was stucco and yeah. so what we ended up doing was we pretty much stuccoed this entire area right here to make it kind of mask the rest of the house mm -hmm. um which obviously ties it in a lot more and we didn't actually pick that up until kind of midway through the project and we kind of noticed that saying well you know the market's really good why don't we go you know do the full thing and and mm -hmm. you know make it look all unanimous or um synonymous i guess would be a better word maybe um, and just make it look all, all the same, essentially. So that was one thing we did right here. Um, you'll also see just kind of some miscellaneous landscaping. This was all trash, bushes, even in the front yard. Yeah, that's one thing I want to. One thing I really want to highlight, Adam, is we we originally thought this was going to be one of my pride of ownership rentals, right? When we were thinking about selling it two thirty ish. When yeah. we started going up later to two seventy to two eighty, it was like, nope can't be a rental anymore. We've got to do extra things. Hence, we did the outside, right? If it was going to be a rental, I promise you that would still be wood. Uh, yeah. If, if it was going to be a rental, I promise you we, we wouldn't have spent the two grand on landscaping, right? We would, yeah. have, just, we would have just, you know, dumped everything. Um, you know, I so agree. there are little things that we did uh, because it was going to be owner occupied. But uh, yeah, what you were going to say something about the plants, I think. Yeah, so in this front, we pretty much had just a ton of dead plants. And, and I mean, they were coming up, you know, pretty yeah. high, four or yeah. five feet. Yeah. And so we took a majority of those out, left a couple of palm trees. Same with the uh, the flower beds here and here. Those all got cleaned out right there. And we put some wood chips just to make it look nice. And you can even see brand new, beautiful red door and a security yeah. security door as well, too, just to make it look nice and pop out. Yeah, um good good call. so nothing really too fancy you know for for landscaping but once you see the beginning and the after yeah. just that little touch up makes it so much nicer yeah folks and if you go to my playlist called walkthroughs which you can see in the description below uh you'll see this one i adam has been good enough i think he did a video once a week for like six weeks for us so you can see the trans transformation start to finish check it out yeah so, yeah so again i think i think to kind of point out the numbers I think what it all comes down to it as an owner occupied unit, I think we spent about three grand on the outside when you include the stucco and, and whatnot. Uh, I actually, include, yeah. I include the windows on the interior, even though they're exterior windows, that, that numbers on the inside, yeah. uh, but like landscaping, cleanup, uh, the new fencing and stuff like that. So um, most of that, I bet you if we made it a rental, we probably would have spent mm, 800 to 1200. But because yeah. we were going, I mean, we were going for, you know, $50,000 difference. We had to step yeah. up and do the rest. I agree. I agree. Cool. All right. Well, let's Take a look inside. inside. Yeah. Yes, please. Awesome. How do you like that and door? You we, were, we were questioning the door color. Did that work out? <laughs> Beautiful. 
Yeah, it's, it's certainly bright. Should we uh, start with the uh, kitchen? Yeah, let's go to the kitchen. Like, yeah, stand like right in that hallway there where you can see the fireplace in the okay. kitchen. Yeah, yeah because if kitchen. you're, yeah, I mean, if you were standing there, this looks like an entirely different room from when we bought it, right? Oh, the agent was, because she hadn't been in here. She had been in here when I walked through it, you know, a year and a half ago, and mm -hmm. then maybe two weeks ago when we were just about finishing up. So it was completely different for her to see all this and how everything looked. Um, so just kind of walk through and show kind of what we've done here. Is that all right? Yeah, I think the biggest thing to start off with is, is that island, because when we bought it, that island did not exist. Yeah, right here. Yep. There was a big kind of phony wall right there, but it wasn't cabinets. It was just kind of like a wall in the middle, you know, went up yay high or so and it was just kind of pointless sitting there yeah it was the weirdest so thing it was like it was like eight feet it was like a rectangle it was eight feet wide four feet tall and then it had these two stupid posts that weren't even connected to anything i remember you pushing on them and they're like dude they're yeah. not even connected <laughs> yeah so that was the nice thing is is something like that you know a lot of the times what we see is we have a full wall right here that we have to take out versus just that little you yeah. know post right there so that was a lot nicer. Um, yeah. But yeah, I'll start just kind of on the right over here yep. for the um, fireplace. Painted all the bricks. Um, I always touch up the inside with uh, just paint it black, yep. which is pretty nice. Um, and just a little tip for anybody that's flipping too, if you ever have a fireplace like this with no foundation or no um, bottom panel, we just put, this is a little bit different, but we just put kind of like a quarter round on mm -hmm. the end. This, is similar to it, but yep. that's the easiest thing to do. And it just kind of ties it all in. Yeah. Nice. So that just kind of makes the fireplace pop. And then we'll come over here. So what we did with this is we pretty much just installed cabinets. You know, we didn't move the stove or any appliances, which is nice because nope. typically, you know, if you're going to make an island, a lot of people might put the stove right there with a drop down range hood. Mm -hmm. And so we just put some extra cabinets, put some nice granite on top. And you can mm -hmm. see as the other cabinets too, we've got some um, just baseboard on the bottom of it to match as well mm -hmm. and just some extra space and now you have something that kind of looks out into the room but also kind of creates some extra space for even the people to sit down on the other side um, just a very nice fit for that in my opinion oh it's 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 I, and again I love the fact that you know the granite sticks over you can throw on probably two maybe three little benches or, or chairs there bar stools that's right what here. I'm thinking of bar stools yeah, yeah. It's, just, it's just, it makes the room, you know, the open floor plan is just a big deal. And the big thing yeah. for me on this is once we got in and we could see the cabinets, we kept all, we obviously the center there is brand new, but all the other cabinets, um, we just kept, we, we sanded and resurfaced, put on new hinges and, and doorknobs, right? Yeah. And I gotta, I gotta flip this around mm -hmm. to say personally, very big pro tip. If you're flipping, and you find stuff where the cabinets aren't destroyed, you got it, you know, there's a level, you know, a level to where you do, you do need to replace them. But if the boxes are in good shape, nine times out of 10, you can just replace the faces and save a ton of money. Or you can, um, you can keep even the faces as well, sand them, paint them, and put them back on with new, um, new fixtures, new, you know, new door handles, and it changes everything. Yeah. Um, saves you a lot of money. And, you know, when I started flipping, I'll flip this back around, but, when I started doing things, you know, you see HGTV and they're, you know, every, they're ripping everything out no matter what, you know, and that's not always the case with this. And you have to know your area where you're at. And so if you're in, you know, maybe you're not in North Fresno where everything's real fancy. And so you might be able just to resavor the cabinets. Yeah. So let I, me give you guys a little look. Yeah, please. Go do. Ahead, Mike. What I, what I loved about this is, is keeping these cabinets, um, man they probably saved us five grand but more importantly oh, yeah. they saved us time right one of the things during this crisis that happened to other flippers is they lost time because everything was back ordered right if you had yep. to go get custom-made cabinets oh it would have been um it, it would have delayed the lumber project. went up yeah exactly yeah 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 so these were all obviously these are Those new are and this is a pretty standard type of design as you can i don't really know what the design is called but these mm -hmm. cabinets are pretty typical for stuff yeah. i do and mike does um and then these ones like we said we we cleaned off the faces we kept the boxes yeah. the other thing too is that we kept the layout yeah which is real nice obviously that's kind of got to keep the layout if you're keeping all the boxes mm -hmm. um 
And so obviously the fridge will be here, dishwasher and stove. Those are going to be installed shortly. We're just keeping the property safe while we're in escrow. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, we were able to keep everything as it is and just redesign everything. Obviously, like I said, we sanded, painted, and they look brand new, yeah. which is awesome. Yeah. And that actually allowed us to spend money elsewhere. Like, for example, if you look at the countertops, uh, we spent, we, these countertops are about twice as much as I normally spend. Um, you know, I think it, I don't remember what it was, but Greg. These are he, nice. Yeah, he, he did that stuff. So we actually spent a little more, more money on the countertops. Uh, and then mm -hmm. we did backsplash subway tiles the whole bit. So um, yeah, pretty nice. I just love the open floor plan. I agree. Yeah. And, we, you know, new sink, new faucets. Yep. Um, like I said, we kept the appliances and everything where it's at. Um, a new range hood as well, right up yep. there. And like I said, these stove and dishwasher will be installed soon as yep. well. So Very that's cool. kind of the layout for the kitchen. Got to save a lot. Um, and make it look a lot more beautiful and kind of change the design just a little bit. So yeah, why don't you go yeah. show the big, uh, the bigger bathroom. Awesome. Cause that's or, a, this one or the bigger one, the one on the left. Gotcha. Down the hallway, yeah. That's cause again, that'll be the next biggest thing. Otherwise they're just bedrooms yeah. and, and whatnot. Right. Front door is right there. Yep. So we'll go right into here is our hallway bathroom. Yeah. Give you guys and, a little look real quick. And this ahead, is, this was a full gut replace, but we didn't move anything, right? The shower is there. The, Correct. The, the, the toilet's in the same spot, but it was trashed. We ripped it all out. Everything's brand new. And we made we did everything to make sure we could keep the cabinets the same kind of color as you can see. Yeah. So this is all new. Um, mm -hmm. It came with the prefabricated countertop on there, which is nice as well. Yep. Um, you don't always need to put a whole new slab of granite and do backsplash up here. Sometimes this is just perfect. Mm -hmm. um, new toilet as well. Everything got caulked in, put up obviously some mirrors, new lights, and then flip around to see kind of the tile job we did. Yep. We got a bathtub all the way to the ceiling. Pretty typical here as well. Yep. Um, so yeah, everything got remodeled, but we didn't have to change any of the plumbing or anything like that around, which is super helpful saves some money as well um and then obviously we have new flooring throughout the house as you can see even in here yeah that's one thing you'll need to figure out if you're flipping homes is you have to learn how to count right one of the things you'll do early on is count how many windows then you'll measure out the rooms and it's you know that's just one thing you get to get to figure out is is how big is the house <laughs> yeah yeah okay very cool thank you buddy awesome Mm -hmm. And then where are we going uh, to next? I guess it's just uh, maybe a couple of bedrooms. And again, the bedrooms are like, hey, look, it's square. Yep. Bedroom, we got new lights in here. Yeah, the only thing we did with the bedrooms, again, I want to highlight what was different. If this was a rental, uh, we would not have changed the doors, right? I think the doors were brown. Um, yeah, we had kind of the old accordion style closets and doors. And so mm -hmm. um, this is pretty common too, just a six panel door. Mm -hmm. you know, two, four, six, yeah. um, that we kind of did. And then same with the closets, we replaced the closet doors just to make those a little bit nicer. And that was kind of like an end decision. You know, we were looking at it and we were like, well, you know, we're going for the max. We need to kind of fix up a couple extra, extra yeah. items. And that was one of them. Um, yep. so yeah, you know, new baseboard flooring outlets, windows, lights, everything in here, if you could think of. Yeah. 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 They, just the extra was the doors. I think we ended up spending like 1500 bucks on all the various it was really the bedroom doors closet doors bedroom yeah. closet doors that we're like you know what stop being cheap zuber spend the money <laughs> well yeah, let me take you guys here's another bedroom leads out well, it doesn't lead out but you can see out to the front yard yeah pretty much same thing in here got our six panel doors right there yeah. new closets as well yep. new windows up there lights same ordeal in here let me take you guys to the third bedroom. So this is our master. Yeah. Got a bigger closet in here, as you can see. Same thing, rolling closet, new doors. And then I'll open up to the bathrooms. Put this light. There we go. So we got a new bathroom. Mm -hmm. Tile all the way to the top. Mm -hmm. And in this one, we don't have a tub, so we just did tile on the ground here and then we've got sink toilet oh whoops needs to be drained yeah 
Yeah. I was wondering where that water is. So I'm like, open the drain, silly. There we go. I'll clean that out in just a sec. Yeah. No yeah. Okay. New um, lights, mirror, everything you can think of in there. Cool. So that one looks real nice as well. A lot of the times with the masters, we do this where we have the uh, stand up, you know, shower instead of putting a tub in there. Yeah. So nice. that's kind of the look for that one. Yeah. No room. And then we have a fourth bedroom in this one, which again was converted before we got it. So we just kind of dressed it up and it'll be interesting to see how they choose to use it. Will they make it a bedroom or will they make it an entertainment room? I'm guessing they'll make, most people will make it an entertainment room, but who knows? Yeah. So here's our kitchen right off. We have our fourth bedroom right in here. Mm -hmm. So you can see we've got a bigger fan in here versus just the regular lights that we were doing in the bedrooms. And then this was the closet that they had. It was just kind of like old wood paneling. Yeah. So what we ended up doing was we sheetrocked it all, yep. put a new light in here, changed everything around. We got our screens in there just to yeah. while we're in escrow. Sure. And so, yeah, so our closet ended up being a lot nicer, a lot bigger. So that might be a good game room. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. And then what we did over here was, as you can, I'll just show you a little peek. We've got our kind of utilities room, washer and dryer hookups in there. And so this was all completely open. There was no walls here. Um, they had this door right over here and this was all open. So we ended up sheetrocking this entire thing and put, you know, baseboard, everything on here yeah. to kind of make it its own separate room. Yeah, I, I so love how it's kind of separate. And that's again, access to the backyard if you wanted it or side. Yeah. Back. So yeah. So we got our, our little um, little sink right here, like we have in the laundry rooms, um, washer and dryer hookups, yep. and even have some cabinets up here as well. We touched those up, painted them, made them look a lot nicer just to match kind of the front as well. Mm -hmm. So a nice little addition. I kind of like where this is at too. Yep. And awesome. then take then take us to the backyard because that again, the backyard. I remember looking at going. Is that going to be four dumpsters or six? <laughs> oh yeah, it always ends up being ten. Oh my god. Just how things work. It was so big. Well, you could see our dumpster back there. Oh, it's still there. Just about overflowed. Yeah. So here's our backyard. We've got a um a shed right here that we actually restored. I'll show you guys in just a minute. Mm -hmm. Um, we replaced both the windows that were cracked, painted it, touched it up, and mm -hmm. we had another one that was right here on this concrete slab mm -hmm. that we ended up just taking it completely out because of the uh pest damage. Yeah. that there was on their termite damage it was just it was kind of withering nice. away yeah yeah so we took that out there was loads of of like stockpiled wood trash like literally all over this yard there was um you know big cinder block wall yeah kind of right going here I took all that out um yeah there was a lot of trash in this whole backyard we cleared all that out um obviously i said this was taken out and then mm -hmm. As you can see, just kind of cleaned it out, yeah. touched up the flower beds just a little bit, yeah. just to make it look nicer. Yeah, it's and so then, much uh, more usable now. I agree. And then the other thing we did as well was this overhang right here. Majority of this was replaced yeah. uh, because of some pest damage. So as you can see, this all got re either replaced and or painted and cleaned. Yeah. So that's a lot nicer. That was kind of falling apart when we first got this. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's been all taken care of as well. So that's real nice. Got our HVAC unit up there as well. Mm -hmm. I'll show you guys the uh, new fence that we did right here. There you go. So this fence goes all the way. We got a new door right here. Yeah. It goes all the way to the back, which is awesome. This fence was kind of withering away right here. So we built up a new one. Yeah. Just makes it look a lot prettier. So that was a great addition as well, too. Pretty and cool. the fence on the other side, we actually was already there. So we kept that. Yep. Um, kind of made it simple, but we just replaced the other one because it needed a lot more work. Yeah. So that's kind of the uh, touch up for the backyard that we did. But yeah, as you can see, our bin back there, that's got to be at least number like six or something. And that yeah. thing's just at the brim. Yeah. So pretty, pretty crazy. Oh, Adam. So this, uh, this was, God, this was our longest flip. If you look from uh, start to finish, but the actual project time, right. The, the time the contractor was there was probably five and a half weeks. You think? 
I think it was pretty quick. Yeah. Considering a, what contractors are taking for time now, Yeah, you know, a lot of people are a couple of weeks out or a month out. Um, and yeah, Greg was able to get in and out. You know, we had some, um, some inspectors come in, you yeah. know, do a couple of repairs, roof, AC, yeah. you know, pests, stuff like that. Um, mm-hmm. but for the most part, Greg got in and out, got everything done that we needed. And even with the, the change orders, you know, those were quick. Yeah. And again, the real, the real saving grace here is when we tore stuff out, nothing had to be replumbed, replaced, moved. We didn't move any plumbing. The sink still where the sink is, the toilets where the toilet is, the tubs where the tub is, all of that. We kept the boxes that really not only saved us money, but time, paint colors, flooring, it's all the stuff we used before. Um, we can count windows. So we ordered those early because uh, those took a while mm-hmm. to come in. Uh, the backyard, we tried to save that one thing, but wasn't worth it. Did a few extra nice things once we realized what price point we were going through. Uh, mm-hmm. So pretty cool stuff. I agree. Yeah. And, and I think that's a good point too, is that we didn't really have to move around anything major, which, you know, it, it, it can very quickly bump up your budget. Um, yeah. just very quickly. I've, I've been experiencing that myself, just moving around plumbing or, mm-hmm. you know, you pull up in the wall and there's termite damage. Now you got to replace all the beams and, yeah. you know, boom, five, 10 grand. Yeah. We were very pocket. lucky with this house. No termite damage to speak of other than the awning in the back, which was just weathered from, from water, really rain got to it. Um, mm-hmm. Everything that was opened up was good. We put back, it, it, it was a uh, relatively speaking, knock on wood, a pretty clean project. So uh any closing thoughts yeah. on this one? I just again, I want to go back to the fact that you saved this deal a couple of times. Uh, you had a seller who trusted you, and you know we were able to walk him back because I, I I think he was ready to let it go. And you're like, no, we got you. We'll we'll we will do the eviction the third time. <laughs> yeah, I think you know two points would be you know the first in terms of like dealing with sellers and you know just property owners in general is just being able to provide listening, which I've had to learn. My mom tells me about it all the time, listening and being patient, understanding what their solution would be, not necessarily, you know, what you want to do, but how you can solve their problem. Um, In this case, you know, they needed to sell their house, but the problem was more getting the eviction done with the tenants. So if we can take that over, even though it was in the contract that they would do it, you know, that provides a a, a great solution for them and they still want to work with you. Um, And then I think on the rehab side, I think a good takeaway for this is, um, you know, obviously we don't always have to to tear everything to pieces Mm -hmm. and redo it. You know, we can savor a lot of things and and still get around without moving around the whole layout. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think we had some help too with with looking at comps, talking to the agent and kind of getting a better understanding. So, you know, my advice would be to just talk to people in your network and, you know, look at other properties that are selling, you know, that's the one thing that, that I was doing and we did, we were looking at cops. Should we paint the fireplace? Should we put tile? Mm. No one else did. All right. Then we don't need, you know, so <laughs> yeah. that's, and it's not, it's, it's a very smart thing. You know, that's, that's really what you're going for. So, you know, why not take advantage of the, the stuff that's already sold to, to kind of look and see where you need to be. Right. Um, so, yeah. And I think that the last thing would just be um, kind of knowing your numbers and getting an understanding when you don't have a contractor available to go walk it with you, you know, yeah. for this one, we did not and I just had some pictures. And so we kind of just went off the brain on what we would need to do. Mm-hmm. You know, things change obviously, but we can kind of, you know, brainstorm what the cost would be, what we would need to do timeline, all that stuff. Yeah. Um, and with time, you know, you get better at that. And then the other thing I want to call out that uh, again, you get credit for your, your uniquely gifted this way is you take care of people that take care of you, right? You said early on, this deal was brought to you by an agent. And you made sure that that agent was a part of the process on the end, right? She listed it. She did the open house and, and she'll be paid yeah. on the other side. So uh, if you are an agent in Fresno, California, and you want a partner, uh, you need to call Adam Abasian because he's going to take care of you. How, how do you want them to call you? Yeah, my uh, just give me my cell phone, 559-360-9622. Um, and the, the real fun part about, you know, working with, with other agents, and realtors is that you know, not only do we get to have a good relationship, but, you know, they have more tools in their tool belt when they go to talk to sellers like this, mm-hmm. you know, instead of just saying, well, let's just list it and sell it to an investor. Well, why not take it, get it taken care of and, you know, not have to put it on the market. Yeah. And at the end, you get to sell a house probably twice as much yeah. and you get to list a beautiful remodeled house, which looks a lot better on the portfolio. Absolutely. You know, that's stuff people want to see. 
Um, and so we take pride of ownership and I guarantee, you know, it'll be a fun experience working with us and we're always happy to teach people the process as well, how things are going, you know, yeah. just so if they want to ever do it themselves. Again, if you're an agent in the Fresno County, you need to add Adam Abasian to your Rolodex. If you run into a, 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 a client that needs help, they need out. They, they have an eviction, they have a squatter, uh, it's a probate deal and you just need someone to take care of you. And oh, by the way, someone who's going to partner with you on the other side and get you paid again. Uh, you need to call Adam. One more time, Adam. What's your phone number? Yeah, it's 559-360-9622. And only other note is, yes, Fresno County, but Madera, Tulare, Kings, shoot, Kern you. County, Merced. We'll do it all. We'll there do you it go. all. <laughs> so we're, we're looking to buy stuff. And, and I'm actively marketing in those areas. And so if there's anybody in those areas, too. Um, if we can't be your buyer, we can connect you with someone who can buy it that we trust. Absolutely. Um, so we're always happy to help out. Yeah. Very cool. Thanks for bringing that up, buddy. I appreciate your time today. You got it. Thanks, Mike.